All right, guys, this is what I have. I have a 2016 Suburban LTZ. Uh, the problem, I'm sure if you're looking at this video, you went what I went through. The vehicle was very hard to stop and you felt that the brakes were not working. You had to step on the pedal very, very, very hard in order to stop the vehicle. All right, uh, so basically what I did is I did some research. Uh, and this is what I found out. Uh, the reason why I wanted to share this is because apparently there is a uh, class action lawsuit. Of course, here in the United States, we always try to sue someone um, about the braking systems and there's been some accidents and so forth. So not to get too much into that, this is what I found out online after some research and using my basic uh, mechanical skills. This is a bulletin. Uh, that's the number. Okay, go online, download it. And so you can read it and get very smart about these guys. Uh, basically, what it's saying here, this applies, uh, they call it additional brake pedal effort. Actually, it's more than effort. You really have to step on this guy to stop this large vehicle. All right, like it happened to me. And it freaked out the wife. I mean, she just went off on me. Basically, this applies to, these are the vehicles that applies to, you know, the Cadillac Escalades, the Silverados, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm not concerned about any of those. My concern was the 2015, 2016 Suburban. That's mine. Okay, what it says here, this PI, uh, supersede parts, whatever. Uh, basically, the following diagnostic may be helpful if the vehicle exhibits the symptoms described by the PI. What he says in some railroad situations, it's not really rare, it's a lot of people encountering this problem. A customer may comment on a hard brake pedal or that increased effort is needed to depress the brake pedal. Now, this increased effort is actually you have to step on this thing and you wish you had a bigger foot to make this guy stop. However, it also in some cases a uh, Tick or ticking noise may be heard, which may sound like an exhaust manifold leak. While performing normal diagnostic, fluids may be found in the brake booster and or the booster vacuum line. Now, that's very important, guys. That's the most important part about this because that's going to determine whether you replace additional parts or not. All right? Uh, and like I said, he says, pay close attention to the fluid. And if it's determined to be engine oil, it could be coming from the vacuum pump. The vacuum pump is belt driven and mounted on the side of the engine block. It is lubricated by pressurized engine oil. Okay? I'll show you that in a minute, how to check for that. It's very simple. Now, these are the recommendations. Replace the vacuum pump, vacuum line. And what basically it says is if the engine if engine oil is found, means inside the booster, okay? It is important for the following parts are replaced. If not, the condition will return. Well, in my case, I replaced the vacuum pump, the vacuum line between the booster and the pump. The brake booster will have to be replaced if I had a uh, oil going up into the booster. That's not the case here, okay? I think master cylinder and vacuum pump belt is uh, an overkill. Uh, but of course, if you take it to a dealership, they're going to tell you that needs to be done. They'll charge you extra for that. Now, these are the parts, okay, for the pump assembly, the pipe, the booster, and the cylinder brake uh, assemblies, okay? Basically, if you look there, you see the, the number for the pump, the number for the pipe assembly, which is the line going, the vacuum line. This is the one that applies to my vehicle. Now, this one may apply to hybrid, I don't know, some other applications. don't know what that means. Uh, and this is the booster. Now, I found the pipe for 48 bucks online through Amazon and about 100 bucks for the booster. I'm sorry, not Amazon, Rock Auto. I found them there. And the pump about 150 uh, 
Now, uh, what I did is I went to my local GMC dealership, and this is what I paid for the parts. Uh, the pump, about 266.33, and the pipe about 84.23. Like I said, you can get the pump for about 150 and maybe the pipe for about 48 bucks through Rock Auto. Uh, I just could not wait. I had to get it. They had it on stock, so I went ahead and jumped on it and bought it. Uh, she wanted her Suburban back up and running, and uh, what she wants, she gets, I guess. All right? So now, how do we start this? First thing you want to do you come to the vehicle get underneath the vehicle and remove your splash plate that's what it looks like when it's removed that's attached up here you see those two that's one and two and there's four other bolts holding that plate now get that out of the way because you need to access the pump the only way to access the pump is right here let me show you the pump this is your pump okay that's the wheel now you need to get this belt out the best way to do it is to jack the engine rotate your engine with the bolt down there it's a 15 16 socket get it in there and then just turn your engine okay jack it so you can uh, turn this and be able to stretch this belt out take it out of the way okay very simple now there are a lot of tools out there for you to be able to do this with a tool and so on uh, I know you guys who know a little bit about this you can stick a screwdriver there and just jack the engine and stretch the uh, belt and get it out okay once you get that out of the way you're good to go uh, as you can see This is the, uh, that's what the pump. Now, when you get this pump out, you're gonna get it out through that area there, all right? That's the pump back there. That's the new one. I just put that in, okay? This is the, uh, you gotta move the stuff out of the way in order to get around for it, but like I said, uh, if you have some good mechanical skills, you should be able to get this thing done without a problem, okay? Uh, I mean, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just an amateur like most of you guys are. Now, I'm going back up here. This is your brake booster. Okay? And this is the vacuum line going all the way down to the pump. Okay? Now, basically, to remove this, just pull this back. There is a... Uh, clip here pull the clip out pull your connector out this right here is your connection into the booster now when you pull this out you're gonna hear like air sucking in that means this thing is under a vacuum right now if you hear vacuum that indicates that the drum itself the booster is not leaking so that's good okay now what does that looks like it's like this Okay, this is the part going into the booster, and this is where the connector goes. And it goes in like this. See that? Same thing. So you get this out. Excuse me. All right. So look at your pipe goes all the way down. Okay, into the connector to the pump and you can see the clips down there now what those clip those clips look like this guys that's all it is just pull those clips back and you'll be able to slide this thing out of the vacuum connection on the pump okay it's right here see it good right here very simple get that out of the way once you get this out your belt is out, then what you want to do is to take out your first bolt holding the pump. Okay. 
that's basically down here. You see it down there? You get that one right through the top. It's the top left one, okay? Which is actually the shorter one of, uh, of on this side, okay? You can get that bolt right through here on the top. Then you get on the bottom, through the bottom of the car. Go all the way in the back. And here she is. This is your pump. Okay, this is the new one. Like I said, the one on the top, which is back here, this is the connector part that you already have out. By the time you get to this point, this should be out already. The, the bolt on the top that you took out of first is right up here. You take this one out, okay? Then on the back of the pump, there's this one and this one. There's two more. It's actually four holding the pump. So get them all out. Now, as a note, this one and the one on the top that you took out first, those two will come with a new pump assembly. At least that's what it happens to me. I got the new pump and it had this one and the one on the top holding the gasket that goes in here. So I took these two out. These two you want to save, okay? If you don't get new ones, then obviously you need to save this. But these two make sure you have in hand, all right? Then once you get all your bolts out, then start working your pump out through here all the way down this way, okay? Basically, it will look like this. Okay, that's the area right there where you'll be getting your pump through, right there. Okay, work it out slowly around everything that is interfering with your process. Don't jank it out. Don't get too desperate trying to get it out. Just work it out very slowly. It will come out. It's just you're going to have to play with it. Okay, then remember how you turn it in order to get it out so you can remember in order to get it in into the same position. There's nothing else to be taken out, okay? So, once you get uh, your new pump in place, uh, one note, make sure when you take out this pump, okay, especially this area here, all right, you're gonna have oil leaking out of here as you take the pump out. That's normal because remember, this thing is full of oil here. There's oil everywhere. This thing is lubricated by oil. So what, what I'm gonna make sure is that when you take this out, make sure that that entire area stays clean and you don't get anything that goes inside the engine block because then it's gonna become part of the oil system. Then you're gonna create another problem, okay? So keep everything clean, nothing to go in there, put the new pump, torque these two guys down to specs the way they're supposed to be, and you'll be fine. All right, now, going back to the top. Guys, like said, make sure you get everything back on there, everything fine installed all your connections your pipe start the vehicle check for leaks and uh you should be good from there now as i mentioned before here is the old pump okay the pump has a back plate like like this i took that out because i like to take things apart myself and uh, it's actually a vein pump as you can see as it turns, it's got a vein that creates the low pressure in this chamber here and creates the vacuum that you need for your braking. Well, regardless, the what I want to point out is that this is, you can see some wear here on my pump. And if you look at the plate, you can see also some wear there. Okay? So that's what's, what's causing our problem with the braking. Uh, fortunately, the the seal was not bad enough to send the oil up through this point to the um to the booster 
so we're good uh, and I did not see any oil in that area so we're good but I just wanted to show you what the pump internals look like it's nothing but a vein pump very basic and uh, it's all worn out and that's why the car was not breaking okay uh, like I said this is a very it's basic mechanic you do not need a whole lot of skills you don't have to be an ASC certified or anything like that but if you are an amateur like me who's got uh, real good mechanical skills and is able to take things apart then you should be able to do it and save yourself some money uh, basically the price for these repairs somewhere around 1200 bucks at the dealership uh, maybe more I don't know what the rate is in some of the areas uh, and they may also tell you you need a whole lot of other things to replace uh, I don't know how they work that out all I know is that what I did today solved our problem uh, once again I hope this helps if you are a uh, you don't have any mechanical skills you're one of those metrosexual males who don't never turn a screwdriver you are a bed wetting liberal uh, one of those guys you're not gonna be able to do this uh, go back to your tofu and your latte and let uh, some good hardcore mechanic or guy that knows what he's doing and, and, and a real man to do it for you okay have a good one